Hey, what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video, I'm going to quickly go over the c -sharp script I used that you can also use to make infinite obstacles for your game in Unity. So right now, what you're looking at is that script. I know it's broken up into two different pictures, but please bear with me. So this is the script that you can use to make infinite obstacles. Now, if we look at the script, you'll see that I have a public game object obstacle and that is the that is what your obstacle is going to be so you have a game object of an of your obstacle in your editor menu for unity and you can just drag that into your into this game object named obstacle but in addition to this we have a public static float max time just in case you want to change max time that's the reason we put it as a static otherwise if you have nothing to do with max time you can leave it as just a public float also, we have a public float decrease and public float increment, and they just decrease the spawn time. So that helps to make the game a little bit more challenging so that people don't get bored after playing your game for 30 seconds. And then to activate the spawn times, or the spawning of your obstacle, we have a, pu we have a public float timer and public float timer two. Now this is kind of a mistake here because you don't really want to modify the timers externally so it should be a private float timer but you know as long as you're not changing the timer value in your editor then you're fine and then the final public thing we have is a public float range and that's so we can have some sort of randomness to the to this to the positioning of our spawned obstacles so in the start uh, in the start method, we have a max time. We set max time equal to 0.6f, and that's to make 0.6 a float. So we set the original max time to 0.6 seconds, and you can change that depending on how, on how your game is and how frequently you want things to spawn. And then just to set the timers to, be, to zero, we just do that in the start function. And then we move on to the update function, um, we see that that we have an if timer two is greater than decrease. Now what this method does is it checks to see if it's time to decrease the decrease the spawn time. So if we look at the at the at the if statement inside of that if statement, it it says if max time is greater than zero point two five. And the reason we do this is because we don't want to increment uh, the max time so that it's impossible to play because that just won't be fun. So what I did is I set a minimum spawn speed. So that spawn speed right now is 0 0.25 seconds. So if so, the, what this statement does is that if max time is greater than 0 0.25, then we'll decrease max time by a specified increment. And you can change that increment in your Unity editor. And after we do that code, we set timer two back to zero. So as you can see that if the this section of our code basically runs after timer two e e or is greater than decrease, and then that reduces our max time and that keeps on going on and on as, as your player keeps playing your game. Now what our second if statement chunk does is that it duplicates our script. And, that have, and the way we do that is by making a new game object and in this example it's game object new obstacle equals instantiate obstacle and if now, and now that we spawned our thing we want to reset that position so what we do is we do a new object dot transform dot position and we set that equal to a new vector 0 8 0 now here it says in 0 8 0 because I wanted to put it at the top of the Y of my game and you can change the value of this to specify your game so for example if you had your game oriented in a landscape position maybe you want it to go on the left or left hand side or outside of your screen but on the x direction so what you could do is you could set uh new obstacle dot transform dot position to new vector three eight zero zero and that will put it on the x direction and now we want to randomize it so we do new obstacle dot transform dot position plus equals new vector three random dot range minus range range zero zero now what random dot range minus range comma range that does is that it finds a random value between range minus range and range 
so that's the entirety of our screen of our game picture screen and it finds one random value and it assigns that to the x value of new obstacle now if you wanted to randomize the position of the y value you could do the random dot range in the y position so it would go zero comma random dot range minus range range zero and then after we do that we set timer to zero and then after that just to make sure the timers are increasing as we continue to play the game i have a timer to plus equals time dot delta time and a timer plus equals time dot delta time and what that does is that it it adds the time that has elapsed between uh between but excuse me, between each frame and that adds to the timer so then that allows the timer to pick up and get a frame of reference for your game if you enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like drop any questions or feedback in the comments below and please consider subscribing to the channel because i post new videos just like this every tuesday thursday and saturday and with that said i'll catch you guys next time stand faced